G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this week's video tutorial is on perspective. Now we're going to be looking at the basics of uh, one point, two point and three point perspective. Um, and perspective is really useful to use when we, you know, kind of do our basic line work and construction lines to guide our drawings for things like backgrounds and static objects. So jumping straight into it, one point perspective, we simply create a point to which all lines that uh, elude to death not death, all lines that allude to death, all lines that allude to depth converge. So going out in any direction, wherever it be, it's like if it starts up here, it's going to converge with that line. Okay, so in drawing this, and they're very haphazard lines, but I'm just trying to demonstrate a very rough point. In drawing these lines, we can see already, ah, bloody flash brush. We can see already that we create somewhat of an illusion of depth. So if I had, you know, a circle here, it would be getting smaller in following that depth path. Now, an example as to how we would use this as a reference in when drawing, uh, I'll use uh, as a guide for now, uh, just boxes. So I'm just going to draw a few random boxes just in random places. And how we use this perspective as a guide, this one point perspective, is if I wanted to make these boxes three dimensional, I, from the edges of the box, follow, you know, as if it were converging to the middle and then stop where the shape stops. So that way, we create fairly convincing three-dimensional shapes. Or if you want to get weirdly complicated, two-dimensional representations of third-dimensional shapes. Yes, so very quickly and easily here, we turn these boxes into three-dimensional boxes. Oops, I didn't follow that line correctly by following our single point of perspective. Um, this is useful in several other ways. So if I used our same same uh, backdrop thing here, it's good in laying out depth. So for example, if I wanted to do a really rough street scene, and again, ugh, all of these um, examples are just really haphazard, but I'm just kind of giving rough ideas and examples here. You notice that like, I redo every second line. It's bloody terrible. It's because Flash uses smooth for the vector brush and uh, half the time it doesn't smooth very well. I'm going to change it, my smoothing to 50. Okay, so this is going to be our road and I'm just going to do a really crappy skyline. And as you can see, the tops of buildings, like the, the, when they're lower, follow a low angle. Whoops. When they're higher, should be steeper. Like that. Okay. And uh, the space, spacing is another thing to keep in mind as, as well with perspective. So the width between buildings is fairly shallow here. But as it increases... It eventually becomes far more distant. Okay, so I'll address that again in a moment. So we've added our third dimensional panel of these buildings by um, kind of drawing the front facing wall and now we just kind of block them off like this. Oops, in adding our other dimensions. It's fairly simple. So there we go. And we add details or whatever. You can do whatever you want. But this is a... Uh, oh, actually, no. I will take time on this because this is another example as to this spacing thing that I was talking about. So with the distance thing, perspective, while everything converges to the one line, the distances between where you would place objects, even if it's an even distance, gets wider the further away from 
that original reference point that it is. So you can see here very easily and quickly, we've been able to set up an example as to how we create that distance variance. So if I was to do road markings, two between every line, we can gauge here roughly what that should look like. Oops. There we go. Same thing if I wanted to do street lamps. So again, marking our, uh, oops, they, they should be uh, in a bit of a cluster when it's further away, but as they space out, really let them space out. So I'll draw a sample lamp, oops, over here. Really terrible lamp. This is, this one's not <laughs> a drawing lesson. This is more like a tool lesson, technique lesson, if you will. Lamp, there you go, I love lamp. There we go, so I'm placing my lamp and it's getting smaller. And I'm going to try and match it up. In fact, I should draw uh, with the reference lines. So we've got our bottom reference line for the lamps, but I'm going to add a top one like this. So I'm going to make sure that the bottom of the lamps, oops, touches the bottom line and the top of the lamps touches the top line. So when I copy and paste and do my resizing, all I need to do is simply match these up between the distant points, distance points, Oops. and the height points that I establish. So these very simple whoops, tools that I've established with uh, the perspective thing, uh, namely so far being in one point perspective, the distances getting closer and further away and the, whoops, the distance is getting closer and further away and the size of objects getting larger and smaller. So there we go. That is my example there. Very quick example as to how in one point perspective, we can create a uh, vacuum, a bit of a, a scope of dimension. So moving along to two point perspective. So it's exactly what it sounds like. One point perspective is one point. Two points perspective is two points. Now, normally they're along a horizontal axis like this. Okay. So if we have our two points at either end of this axis and we draw, whoops, our reference lines. Uh, in fact, I should do two different colors for this just to make things simple. I'm going to do one, a light yellow. If it decides to, there we go. And I'm going to draw my lines out like this you get long fairly straight at least brush strokes I should be using the line tool but here I'm using a brush like an idiot whatever leave me alone bloody hell alright copy paste I'll make the other one green, modify, transform, flip horizontal. Okay. So making sure that the horizontal axis matches for both. Okay. So this is something as to what these axes look like. The two points sucking in on both directions. And an example as to how we would use this in a situation We'll do the same thing. We'll use boxes. So what I'm going to do, instead of drawing flat squares for where the boxes will be, I'm going to draw the front facing corner in different areas. And then the rest will be very easy to sort out on its own. Okay, so if I do that, now all I need to do is simply follow the lines on both axes. Now, the lines aren't fully there over here, but I can kind of calculate where they would be. So we follow 
our grid. On both angles. Uh. And we end up with similar to our first box example, but this time it's, I don't know, I guess it's just kind of more versatile and adds more pull, more um, angle. I don't know words today, apparently. <laughs> That'll do. All right, so this is our first example of boxes. Now, when we compare it to our previous one, when we look at this, these are somewhat orthogonal in the sense that the front is always flat. Um, whereas here, it's that's not the case. We have a front corner. Now, if we uh, were to pull these in, sorry, if I previously drew the dots on either horizon closer together, it would have completely warped the perspective, but even in just stretching it like that and seeing the difference between those two, that is exactly how the drawing would have changed. So you can see that, and I'm going to zoom out here and then pull the whole thing taller and in more, just to show you a really extreme example as to what I mean. Um, with these original dots further away, the uh, it's almost like the difference between a normal lens and a fisheye lens. The perspective is really wide, it's open and, you know, whereas when we push them together like that, that was my phone, sorry. Um, when we push them together like that, it really goes extreme. So if you want like extreme shots, things like, you know, Spider-Man web slinging down the street where you show like two full streets and you can almost like how we did this example of the street view, you can almost have two of those, one street over here and one street over there. So you can see how that would be useful. Okay, and then in three-point perspective, it is also exactly what it sounds like. So I'm going to draw my first point down here, like this. But And my second point, copy, paste, and flip it over. Make that blue or yellow. Okay. okay. So, oops. And then finally, get another one. And we do it as well. So you can really have fun with this stuff and like experiment with angles and drawing the same shape with different uh, points of perspective, you know. So if I was to draw, a, let's say, a city building using three-point perspective, I might draw the first, ang first uh, corner up here and follow that angle down that way, follow the yellow angle and that way. Oops. And it's really cool because you get to create the illusion of some pretty cool effects. And what you do with that is pretty much up to you. Now, this is uh, perspective in its most basic form um, in 1.2.3 point points perspective. Because the fact is, you will eventually be doing things like creating rooms where um, objects are on different angles and they don't always have, they don't always, uh, you know, organically follow the point of perspective, right? But as an example, I'm going to uh, draw up a bit of a room. And in this room, I'm going to have one point of perspective for the room and uh, figure out where the corners of the walls will be by drawing my points of perspective lines this. So we have that reference. And now on top of that, I will draw my room. So the back wall is here. Oops. It's not going down. There we go. 
I don't want the wall to be that tall, so I'm going to cut it off there. And in order to figure out how the wall pulls out, I draw a line from my point of perspective that crosses the corner of the room, like that. Then I go back to my room and I draw out the corner like this. And there we go, we have our box. Whoops. For the room. Okay, so the next thing I wa might want to do is, uh, let's say, put in a bed, uh, a desk, um, and a door. So I will want my bed. I'm going to put wireframe on that for a second. I will want my bed to be over here. So I'm going to have the front of the bed like this. So you can see how it's all kind of like fitting cubes together, really. And then you add your details. Desk. I want the back of the desk to be here. And I'll figure out the height and how it comes out through the perspective line. So front, that's where the ba uh, back of the desk is against the wall. And I'll figure out how it goes out by doing this. Following the perspective lines. Drawing a straight line. So that's how the desk top will be. And drawing a straight line down and figuring out where the bottom will be in the same way by matching the point of perspective here with the corner here. We see that comes down here. Flat line again. And the same thing with this corner. So we've made our desk cube. And the door is a door. So it's flat. There we go. So we've got our door. Um, now, I'm going to add a chest, like a, like a treasure chest that toys are kept in, but I'm not going to have it follow this one point perspective. I want it to be on an angle. I want that angle to be kind of like this, right? So to do that, I'm going to create two points of perspective along, oops, along this axis, like back here and here. And if the line's following in from there, go in like this, the front corner of the chest will be here. And then I can figure out where the top angle whoops, of the chest will be. Same thing on the other side of the top, but I will be adding my rounded top because it's a chest and doing the other side. So there we go. Now this looks really messy, but when I go back to my line work frame and I, I'm going to draw lines over these and I'm going to speed it up so you can see how I apply it. And it's fairly simple, but you know, watch and see what you think. And you can see in the end how very quickly by using this very rough uh, perspective line work, construction lines kind of, as a guide, you can create simple environments and objects in which there is a, uh, a consistency in depth and space. So I hope this tutorial has been useful. It's very simple. Everything's, you know, I mean, just showing the bare basics. Um, so that we can kind of have a quick look at looking, doing, doing environments and stuff. Now there is a friend of mine who is an incredible environment artist who one day, I swear, I will, I will capture him and kidnap him and force him to do a background tutorial for me. Um, but until that day, we put up with my simplicity. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, have a good day and thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed this video. Links are below to download the original files for reference. Remember, if you animate or draw something cool, be sure to share it on Newgrounds.com, the internet's best source for animations, games, art and music. Until next time, see you later.